وعليكم رحمة الله وبركاته إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد بارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد بارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد بارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد بارك وسلم it is a great mercy and countless favor of allah subhanahu wa taala that he has created us in the umma of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam alhamdulillah this was also the desire of many previous prophets before rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam further allah subhanahu wa taala associated us with his blessed book of quran e majid and he also associated us with his friends that is the ulama allah and he has helped us in gathering here to renew our faith to renew our iman to make tasdeed of our iman alhamdulillah so in our deen series we are trying to understand la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from our last lectures we are trying to understand different types of alams alam means a place where the makhluk resides the creation stays there are three major alams we saw that alam e shahadat alam e barzakh and alam e arwah alam e shahadat the place we are staying now is alam e shahadat alam e barzakh we saw and alam e arwah also we are trying to go through that in alam e arwah we saw there are three main creation alam e arwah there are three creations in alam e arwah ruh ish khayal ruh means the spirits ishq means love and khayal means thoughts from our last two lectures we try to understand that ruh is also a creation of allah subhanahu wa taala and ishq love mohabbat this is also the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala so they cannot be our ilah they cannot be our sustainer they cannot be our razir they cannot be our malik but we have seen that we are trying to you know give the value of the creator to the creation what the creator is saying in la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallam i am your ila i am your sustainer i am the fulfiller of your needs i i am the one who is your razi i am the one who is your mukhtar this is allah subhanahu wa taala saying kalima and in kalima from la we are denying that the sustainer is only allah subhanahu wa taala this needs to be endorsed and this needs to be denied that no makhluk is our ila no makhluk is our malik no makhluk no creation is our sustainer no creation among the makhluk of alam e shahadat alam e barzakh alam e arwa is our fulfiller is the fulfiller of all our needs no makhluk is the fulfiller of our needs not this, and this needs to be certified this needs to be endorsed in our heart so that is why we are trying to understand the creation because when we recognize the creation when we recognize the reality of the creation we can come to a conclusion that all the makhluk all the creation we see that they are not ila they are not our sustainer they are not responsible for our life they are not responsible for any movement in our life then we can say la ilaha then illallah then illallah comes so allah subhanahu wa taala is has made this kalma in such a way that first the uluhiyat of the creation the sustainer sustaining ship abilities that are seen in the, the fulfilling abilities the fulfilling of needs this ability that is seen in the creation that is to be removed from the heart first this is to be done so that is why we are trying to understand the creation so today inshallah with the help of allah subhanahu wa taala and the faiza of rasul allah sallam we will today try to understand the third creation of alam e arwa that is thoughts thoughts means thoughts may be idea it may be an imagination you know thoughts means it is called khayal in urdu so thoughts imagination it is a notion it is some uh, you know things that comes in our heart so what people have done is what we are doing is with our thoughts also with our thoughts some thoughts come to us we have imagined something and even with our thoughts we have considered something that is the creation as ila so in thoughts also we create with imaginations also with some ideas in our heart with our own thoughts we make something as our ila and that 
is also to be removed because thought is also the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala thoughts that come to us it is the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala and this same as ruh and ish they cannot be seen but they can be you know felt that similarly thoughts cannot be seen but they can be felt you have thoughts everybody has thoughts this is not denied by anybody so we have thoughts so thoughts come to us but what are we doing with that thoughts with those thoughts we are giving the credit of the creator to the creation this is the problem to us so that is why all ya allah the friends of allah subhanahu wa taala they are removing the wrong thoughts from our heart by helping us in recognizing and identifying the reality of the creation so these wrong thoughts this wrong imagination what we are having in our hearts this is also to be removed with the help of la ilaha illallah see this is so what ha- what is happening in thoughts also we are giving the credit of the creator to the creation in thoughts also we are making shirk in thoughts also we are making kufr in thoughts also we are making nifaq inshallah we will see from the blessed book of quran majid inshallah we will uh, see how allah subhanahu wa taala says in our thoughts what are we doing what wrong thoughts are we getting inshallah so thought is also the idea the imaginations we do this is also the creation of allah subhanahu wa taala so we should also observe our thoughts what kind of thoughts come in our heart are these thoughts making us go near allah subhanahu wa taala or or are these thoughts making us do kufr shirk nifaq in our heart this is very important so observance of thoughts is important so all these can be done understood and felt when the teaching of la ilaha illallah is understood when we get the knowledge of la ilaha illallah when we understand la ilaha illallah we will never do shirk we will never do kufr we will never be do nifaq unless and until we understand la ilaha illallah so knowledge of la ilaha illallah is very important because if we get la ilaha illallah the knowledge of la ilaha illallah the understanding of la ilaha illallah will help us to realize us realize that we are involved in shirk from the thoughts our own thoughts these are making shirk kufr and nifaq so this is to be understood la so that is why la ilaha illallah is very important and we are nowadays ignoring this because this is very very important this is the base of our deen this is the foundation of our deen without this foundation the building of our deen cannot be established so this foundation of la ilaha illallah this is very important because iman comes from la ilaha illallah ihsan comes from la ilaha illallah taqwa comes from la ilaha illallah tauhid also comes from la ilaha illallah so we are inshallah trying to understand la ilaha illallah so inshallah we will go through one words of the quran e majid allah subhanahu wa taala says in chapter of hamza this is chapter number 104 of the quran allah subhanahu wa taala is now here in this uh, chapter explaining to us how we are you know in our thoughts making shirk how we are associating partners with allah subhanahu wa taala in our thoughts see this is very very important this is very beautiful teachings of wali allah they are even removing no muslim after reciting kalima he does idol worshiping after the recitation of kalima he doesn't you know make worship of the idols but what kind of shirk we do it is the shirk related to the heart shirk ke khafi the hidden shirk the hidden shirk means the shirk which is inside our heart that is associating partners with allah subhanahu wa taala that is making giving credit of uh, to be given to allah subhanahu wa taala that is sharing this credit of allah subhanahu wa taala with someone else all credit all praise all glorification is for allah subhanahu wa taala alone this is alhamdulillah rabbil alam so even you see how blessed we are that we are being taught we are being given this knowledge with the blessings of allah subhanahu wa taala and the faizan of rasul allah subhanahu wa taala and also the faizan of wali allah we are told about this very very you know uh, very very you know hidden thing hidden thing in our heart that is to be removed the hidden shirk from our heart this is also told to us so allah subhanahu wa taala in surah humza chapter of humza allah subhanahu wa taala is saying how we are you know with thoughts displeasing allah subhanahu wa taala 
making allah subhanahu wa taala unhappy how are we doing that allah subhanahu wa taala says allah subhanahu wa taala says this is english translation wo to every slanderer backbiter allah subhanahu wa taala says slander means the one who makes false statements the one who makes statements that damages any anyone's reputation means you make some you uh, makes for your for an example a husband makes slander on us on on her on his wife and that is not false that is not true so this is slandering means without any proof you are saying something to somebody and damaging you know dam these are some damaging statements about someone so this is slandering allah subhanahu wa taala is saying there is problem for the one who makes this slander there is the problem for one there is a trouble for one there is trip, difficulty for the one who makes this slander so allah subhanahu wa taala in this verse first is saying this is a problem the one who does this slandering the one who makes false statements about someone this is a big problem for him so this is a problem for us yeah, we should repent if we are saying something against somebody without any proof and we are slandering somebody and every time we are trying to find mistakes in him every time we are trying to backbite him that means this is a problem for us there is a problem inside us and this is a warning from allah subhanahu wa taala for us for me for you for everybody this is and, and this is quran and allah subhanahu wa taala says wo to every slanderer backbiter who gathered wealth and counted it over and over and what is he doing problem for him for those who gather wealth who collect wealth who collect collect wealth and they count it over and over over and over always they keep on counting means why what do you mean by counting they keep this money with them they do not spend in the way of allah allah subhanahu wa taala saying difficulty is for them problem is for them trouble is for the one who makes slander who gathers wealth who earns wealth and he always counts and counts and counts and counts so the problem is for those who we for if we are also gathering money if we are also earning money if we are also collecting money and keeping it in our bedroom keeping it in our almara and we are always counting that means uh, there is a problem for us allah subhanahu wa taala dislikes this allah subhanahu wa taala wants us that this money needs to be spent in his path either in the form of zakat or in the form of charity what are we doing we are gathering that money and we are keeping it with us and we are th- and the third and the next thing this is very very important thing wo to every slander backbiter who gathered wealth and counted it over and over thinking that his wealth will make him live forever this is very important statement of the quran thinking he thinks that he makes this thought that his wealth will make him live forever this is the most important as per today's topic this is the most important statement that we need to understood what he thinks the one who slanders somebody who gathers wealth and he counts and counts and counts every every now and then and he thinks that his wealth will make him live forever what is what is he thinking this is the thought see shirk in thoughts this is to be removed see this has been taught to us by allah so in thinking also he is thinking that his wealth his money his property will make him live forever there is no one in the this world who came and didn't went away everybody will taste death allah subhanahu wa taala is saying these people they think that his wealth will make him live forever that means he is associating allah subhanahu wa taala with wealth he is thinking that money he gathered and counted this will make him live forever so we should see ourselves we should see our heart where our hearts are what is the condition of our heart what is the thought that is coming into our heart when money comes here allah subhanahu wa taala is saying this man and there are punishment also we will see that also there are punishment after this words also before we will try to understand that he is thinking that this wealth this money this property whatever i have this will make me live forever so imagine our imagine yourself or i should imagine myself we are also having some thoughts we are in our thought thinking that this money will help me live forever this money will help me solve my problem this money will help me you know 
go from one country to another country this money will help me in the marriage of my daughter this money will help me in the admission of college of in admission to the college of my son this money will help me get the job this money will help me in so and so things so these are the thoughts that are coming towards actual thoughts should have been what what should it had be what should have it has been it should be that because of allah subhanahu wa taala my needs will be fulfilled because of my ila because of my sustainer my you know risk will be given to me because of allah subhanahu wa taala my problems will be solved because of allah subhanahu wa taala the troubles the difficulties in my life will go away because of allah subhanahu wa taala all my problems of the family will go away because of allah subhanahu wa taala my family problems my brothers problem my relatives problem my office problem my job problem my business problem all this will go away only with the help of allah subhanahu wa taala this should have been our thought but allah is saying the one who has counted gathered money he counted it again and again again and again he is thinking that his wealth will make him live forever and this is a very very important thing and this is this comes to us in uh, in our heart you feel you see imagine yourself there is some problem comes to us how this thought comes and these are bad thoughts and a problem comes to us for an example there is some family member of your house and he is to be immediately rushed to the hospital and he has you know got some accident for the sake of understanding what is the thought that comes to us our thoughts will be like i have money i have so and so hospital i have my friend i have my fr- uh, brother as doctor i have my father as doctor and my sister is also doctor these are the thoughts that comes to our you know heart what should be the thought the actual heart the actual thought should be la ilaha illallah should be our thought it is allah subhanahu wa taala who will help him who will help me and then the asbab the resources should be you know used to utilize the utilization of the resources should be done every time but the problem is what is the condition of our heart what is the thought that is coming into the heart it is important it is that what is the thought is the thought of wealth coming into our heart is the thought of you know our you know position in the society coming into the in, in our heart is the thought that my brother is my doc is a doctor he will help my friend he will help my relative is this thought coming to us or is the thought the uh, uh, a thought that is coming into our heart that is my hospital this is my hospital this is my friend hospital he will help me a lot is this thought coming to us and this thought is a wrong thought actual thought should be actual thought that is that will make us go near to allah subhanahu wa taala that will make us you know think that it is only allah subhanahu wa taala whatever the problem may be whatever the resources may be i will utilize i will utilize every resources because this alam e shahada alam e hikma this is the alam of hikma i will utilize but it is only allah subhanahu wa taala who will fulfill this need it is only allah subhanahu wa taala who is responsible for my nurturing it is only allah subhanahu wa taala who is responsible for my risk it is only allah subhanahu wa taala who is responsible for removal removal of all the difficulties in my life so this is a good thought this is the thought that allah subhanahu wa taala likes and this is the thought that help us get taqwa and tauhid so see how uh, important thoughts are so we should see what our thoughts are we should see what our bad thoughts are coming we should keep a watch on our heart we should just stand as a watchman stands near uh, as a security in front of a house guarding the house from thieves from dogs from animals similarly the heart is also like a land it is a land all allah says they it is like a land we should safeguard it we should stand in front of that we should safeguard it from shaitan from kufr from shirk from nifaq from every bad thought we should safeguard it so this is very very important the wrong thoughts will lead to lead us to do shirk kufr and nifaq so this is this should also be denied from la ilaha illallah whenever any bad thought comes that uh, do uh, that uh, makes us do kufr shirk nifaq we should say la ilaha illallah we should say no makhluq is ilah illallah la is my ilah thoughts are makhluq thoughts are creation no thoughts whenever this thought come we should say no makhluq is ilah 
the thoughts of alam e arwa they are also not my ilah this is a wrong thought we should say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so whatever we thoughts are we are, we are getting we should see whenever we do not have a job what thought we are getting allah subhanahu wa taala is saying he is thinking that his wealth will make him live forever so this man he is thinking this for us this for this ayah this what is still the day of judgment he is thinking that his wealth will live, making live forever means he is considering from his thought that wealth is his mabud mabud is the one ilah the one who is to be worship he is the one who is ilah he is the one who is sustainer and with this thought allah subhanahu wa taala is saying he is thinking that his wealth will make him live forever he is not thinking that i will i am responsible for his life i gave him i give him breath i gave him birth i give him hidaya i make him live i make him die i then i make uh, then i will also on the day of resurrection on the day of khayama i will make him you know wake up again from his death so this is to be thought but allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that problem for the one who is thinking that his wealth will make him live forever so we are also having many thinking in our heart many thoughts in our heart which are saying that this will make him me live forever this will make my life happy this will make my you know a life good this uh, with this you know with this uh, uh, change of visa with this visa or with this passport my you know all my needs will be fulfilled so these are wrong thoughts these are very bad thoughts that is that, are, that those are coming into our hearts check this thought should be checked every now and then we should need, we need to check we need to check and this thought definitely comes but the problem is we do not observe that we do not safeguard that whenever this comes we should say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so we should remove that thought and we should get a good thought we should make toba to allah subhanahu wa taala and we should pray allah to allah subhanahu wa taala o allah subhanahu wa taala safeguard me from these wrong thoughts and make me do good thoughts and so these are the shirk in thoughts shirk in thought so this is disliked by allah so allah subhanahu wa taala dislikes shirk and this is the shirk not from outer side this is in the inside shirk and this inside shirk should be removed and this is to removed this will be removed by the teaching by the knowledge of la ilaha illallah and allah subhanahu wa taala says thinking that his wealth will make him live forever allah subhanahu wa taala says no he will be thrown in in al hutama allah subhanahu wa taala says this man who thinks in his thought that he thinks that the other than me there is a sustainer other than me there is fulfiller of needs other than me there is some raziq other than me who is, uh, who will make him live forever allah subhanahu wa taala says no he is wrong he is wrong he will be thrown into al hutama and what is al hutama this is also explained by allah subhanahu wa taala and what made you realize what hutama is it is the fire of allah it is the fire of allah subhanahu wa taala it is a fire created by allah subhanahu wa taala it is the it is the fire lightened by allah subhanahu wa taala for for whom for those who are counting money gathering money counting it over and over again and thinking from their hearts that this money will make me live forever and thinking from their heart that this thing this creation will help me in my life thinking that this creation is my mabud thinking that because of this thing my needs will be fulfilled other than allah we are thinking this so allah is saying he will be thrown into al hutama it is the fire created by allah subhanahu wa taala the one that will rise right to the hearts reaches the inside of the heart allah subhanahu wa taala how is that fire it will reach the inside of his heart see he he will be thrown into the fire that is that was a problem but again allah saying allah is saying this fire will rise inside his heart it will reach the inside of this heart and further allah subhanahu wa taala says indeed it is closed over them from all sides allah subhanahu wa taala again says this fire is such that it will be closed from all sides this is the fire that will be closed from all side means allah subhanahu wa taala says it will be like a boundary and he will be thrown into the fire that is called allah hutama it is a fire created by me and this will reach inside the heart so that is the punishment means the one who does shirk with allah subhanahu wa taala even the shirk in thoughts thinking 
having bad thoughts and accepting that thoughts this is leading for us to live in hell fire forever so what is to be needed to get iman to get the knowledge of la ilaha illa to remove this shirk e khafi the hidden shirk outer shirk zahiri shirk no muslim does but the shirk of inside which is bad thoughts bad desires from our heart this needs to be you know removed this needs to be removed this is very very important and how it is to be removed how these thoughts get removed this is explained by molana jalaluddin rumi rahmatullah in masnavi sharif in his masnavi sharif molana rumi rahmatullah will try to conclude this masnavi sharif molana rumi rahmatullah gives a very very beautiful hikaya a very very beautiful you know story that will help us realize how important you know the shirk is, uh, is needed to be removed and what is this process of removing all this he he says that once in a jungle there was a man sleeping and he was sleeping in such a way that his mouth was open and a snake was passing by and this snake he climbs that man and he you know this snake small snake he this snake is entering into the mouth of that sleeping man the man was sleeping at some distance there was a horse rider rider he was a soldier he was uh, uh, you know going on the horse he sees this you know uh, situation he sees that this man is sleeping and snake is going into the, his mouth he runs towards him till the time he runs towards him what happens is that this snake reaches inside the mouth of that man and you know what this soldier uh, does he had a weapon because he is a soldier he had a weapon uh, like a, he had some hunter like thing and he uh, takes that hunter out and he tries to beat that man and he tries to beat that man what does this man do he wakes up immediately from the sleep he doesn't know he is careless about the snake he doesn't know what is happening now and he is you know surprised to see that a man on the horse is beating him and he says why are you beating man he says but still even after listening this the soldier say uh, still you know hits him with the hunter and he keeps on you know beating that man with the hunter the soldier keeps on beating the man with the hunter and he keeps on beating keeps on beating the man says the man beaten he says oh my brother oh the soldier why don't you mm-hmm. kill me with what one blow from your knife the knife you are having why don't the gun you are having why don't you kill me with that one shot why are you giving me repeated you know pains with this blood is coming from my body what is the reason you are beating me up then the soldier again beats him up he doesn't know what is what to do he runs and runs the soldier beats him and he comes under a tree the soldier ask him eat those fruits there were fruits you know spoiled fruits for so many days and it had very bad smell from that it had very bad smell in that so the soldier asked this guy and uh, by uh, beating him to eat those fruits when he eats those fruit this man after some time he sees that he vomits he ke- he vomits he takes everything whatever he he ate outside and he finds out that there is along with those Uh, you know fruits there is a small say, snake with it there is a small snake then he realizes that why this soldier is beating me up why this soldier is after me then he realizes his mistake and he kisses the hands and legs of the soldier and he says you are like an angel to me you are like a you know friend to me thank you so much thank you so much i will remember this for a long time because of you today i was saved thank you so much and he keeps on be you know becoming grateful to him with this story molana rumi rahmatullah explains to us now the moral of the story is very important what is to be understood this is very important the sleeping man example of that sleeping is man is like a, the one who is careless careless with the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala the one who is careless with the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala the one who is ghafil the one who is heedless the one who is not attentive towards allah subhanahu wa taala this example of that man and the mouth the example of that mouth is similar to the mouth uh, similar to the heart and 
the example of that snake is like the thoughts from shayatin the thoughts of kufr shirk nifaq from shayatin and the example of that soldier is like solihin is like solihin the one who are inheritors of knowledge from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are the inheritors of knowledge from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so mawlana rumi rahmatullah le says when we sleep in a state of carelessness when we sleep in the state of ghaflat when we sleep without in the, in the state of you know forgetfulness of allah subhanahu wa taala what happens in our heart shaitan puts shaitanic thoughts kufr thoughts nifaq thoughts in our heart and what we will do we will accept the thoughts and we will do shirk in thoughts we will do shirk in thoughts and because of this our life will be destroyed we will be destroyed both in this life and the hereafter but when in the state of disease of this heart and this is this is this is a disease of the heart kufr shirk nifaq this was service and we do not we are not aware about that and this is the disease of the heart this disease of the heart when this man who has this disease disease he goes to a friend of allah subhanahu wa taala this friend who is a solihin who is a siddiqin who is a shohada he will you know with the teachings of allah subhanahu wa taala with the teaching of rasul allah subhanahu wa taala with the teachings of quran and deen he will help him to remove that thoughts at the initial stage the disciple he will feel that he is being tortured he is being though this is not the case actually this is not the severity actually he will feel that at the starting he will feel that he is being you know troubled he is being given some pain at the starting he will feel he will feel some some pain is given to him but in reality see at the end he will realize that this is the gift of allah subhanahu wa taala he will realize that this solihin this is a uh, you know this is the one sent to me by allah subhanahu wa taala and he will thank him for ever in his life and he will remember him forever in, in his life just like the man beaten by the soldier tells to the soldier that you are like an angel to me so this is the importance of solihin in our life this is the importance of solihin in our life with this these are the though these people are the inheritors of knowledge from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and see how important this is they remove the hidden shirk from our heart and now shaitan and his you know disciples what are they doing they try to move us away from this holy allah this is the problem shaitan doesn't want us to remove the shirk e khafi from our heart shaitan is the one who put the shirk and we accept that and we get involved in the shirk and he wants everybody to die without iman this is his main intention shaitan's main intention is to make us die without iman and we are following him and he is responsible he is the one who is trying every best to avoid for us to go to holy allah because if we go to holy allah we will get the identification of the reality of the shaitan reality of iblis <coughs> reality of evil thoughts in our heart and with the help of holy allah we will remove the shirk from our heart and then we can fight the shaitan easily and shaitan doesn't want us to get stronger if we get stronger then the shaitan will get weakened he doesn't want you know for us to die on iman so for what is to be done for us to die on iman we should pray to allah subhanahu wa taala oh allah subhanahu wa taala make us all die on iman make khatima bil khair for all of us we should make or we should make our best you know to go to holy allah to have their you know companionship and to learn from them to learn the knowledge of la ilaha illallah from them. still today even holy allah they are present and allah subhanahu wa taala will keep them till the day of judgment but it is our efforts our you know try how are we trying so we should remove this lie you know the wrong understanding of the makhluq the creation from our heart through la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so one more words of the quran we will go through that and inshallah we will try to conclude that allah subhanahu wa taala says in the chapter of jasiya this is chapter number 45 words number 23 chapter of jasiya words number 23 allah subhanahu wa taala says 
Have you seen the one who has taken his own desires as his ilah? Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is talking regarding those people who has taken, who have taken desires as their ilah, desires as their maabut, desires as their rab, desires as their sustainer, desires as their raziq. What do you mean by desires? Desires means you wish for something. you 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 have this feeling that without this thing you know my life is incomplete my life is difficult and you go after that you may have desires for money you may have desires for women other than your wife you may have desire for wrong habits you may have desire for cigarette you may have desire for smoking drinking you may have desire uh, for earning uh, you know haram you may have desire for you know making life difficult for other people allah subhanahu wa taala is talking to regarding regarding them that they are people who have made desires as their ilah ilah means ilah is the one who is responsible for fulfilling all our needs who is the ilah is the one who is our razi who gives us risk who provides us risk ilah is the one who will remove all our difficulties from our life ilah is the one who is our creator Ila is the one who gives us life and he takes life from us so here allah subhanahu wa taala is saying i am your ila i am your sustainer i am responsible for your needs i am responsible for your sustenance i am responsible for your risk i am responsible for your strength i am responsible for your drink water clothes i am responsible for your house but there are people who are making their desires as is as their ila means they are associating partners with me they are associating that i am i am the ila but they are also saying this is ila for an example for a desire of money people they have money they have property but in desiring of money in desire of money they run after money in such a way that they feel that without this money my life will be incomplete i will be dying without this money i will never live a good life without money actually what should be the desire what should have been the thought the thought should be that it is because of allah subhanahu wa taala my life is complete it is because of allah subhanahu wa taala i am living it is because of allah subhanahu wa taala my needs are fulfilled but we have the, having this desire this thought that the thought comes then the desire comes that this money is helping me fulfill all my needs this money is helping me you know nurturing of my family this money is helping me you know in helping my friends money 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 so desire of money desire of money see this is the desire. similarly desire for you know you have you know there are some people they have their wife wives what is happening is they are going after some other woman they are going after some other woman other than their, their wife and this is a wrong desire why they are going after this some other woman they feel that with this lust with this you know uh, yearning of the heart with this you know attachment of this heart to other women their needs are their needs are fulfilled they feel that this is helping me you know give me peace to my heart this is helping me you know live a very you know smooth life live a very proper life so they have considered this as their ila some people money some people property some people friends some people you know their property they desire some people you know they have many desires so in wrong this wrong desires what is doing allah subhanahu wa taala saying they are someone who has taken their desires as their ila their desires desire means any wish they desire that i get this they desire that without this i am nothing they desire that without money i am nothing they desire that without money my health is, uh, is nothing without money you know i cannot live uh, you know so and so life i cannot live forever without money i cannot help others without money i cannot do so and so without money i cannot do go do job without money so this desire and this what happens is after getting getting a wrong thought and we go after the desire the desire this desire you know this gets endorsed in our heart and this leads to kufr shirk nifaq because allah subhanahu wa taala is saying they are someone who are making their desires as their ila so we should see what our desires are there are good desires also bad desires also what are good desires good desire is that i will uh, you know understand 
the religion of allah subhanahu wa taala i will understand you know the purpose of my life i will understand why i came here i will understand and you know why where will i go i will understand qurani majid i will understand you know the teachings of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will help others this is a good desire and this will help us make us go near allah subhanahu wa taala this is a good act but there are bad thoughts also bad desires also bad desires take us away from allah subhanahu wa taala bad desires will make us go on the wrong path so we should see what our desires are because there are some desires that is making us you know do kufr shirk and nifaq here allah subhanahu wa taala says this is quran so we'll re- read again have you seen the one who has taken his own desires as his ilah and whom allah has let astray allah subhanahu wa taala saying i have let him astray the one who has made his desires as his rab as his ilah i have made him astray means i have moved him away from the correct path allah is saying so see allah is saying if you associated with me if you are associating desires with me i will move you from the correct path i will make you go astray though he has knowledge he may have knowledge but allah is saying i have moved him away from the correct path and what has allah done and sealed his hearing and his heart and put a cover on his sight what is the punishment allah subhanahu wa taala is uh, giving to those who have made desire as their ilah allah is saying i have sealed his hearing means he cannot hear the reality i have sealed his heart means he cannot understand the reality and i have put a cover on his sight means he cannot see the reality means he cannot see the reality he cannot listen the reality and he cannot understand the reality though the reality is friend of friend of him but because this is a punishment from allah subhanahu wa taala because of this wrong desires because of his moving away from allah subhanahu wa taala because of following his own self allah has given him punishment that allah has placed a cover on his eyes and he cannot see the reality he allah subhanahu wa taala has put a seal on his ears and he cannot listen to the reality allah has put a seal on his heart and he cannot see the understand the reality and the further further allah subhanahu wa taala says who then can guide him after god has let him astray will you not then remind yourself and remind others now allah subhanahu wa taala saying i have given him punishment there is no one who can guide him after i after i have made him you know astray allah subhanahu wa taala saying it is only me who can guide him because i have made him go astray because i have moved him away from the correct path he is now going on the wrong path because of his own actions no one except me can guide him so hidayat is from allah subhanahu wa taala remember this thing hidayat is from allah subhanahu wa taala we cannot give hidayat to somebody we cannot get hidayat by ourselves it is allah subhanahu wa taala who gives us hidayah who gives us guidance and this is a blessing blessing of allah subhanahu wa taala that he has given us you know guidance and allah subhanahu wa taala say will you not then remind yourself means this is a lesson for everybody do not you do not remind yourself and you do not remind others that how desire is letting desire this this desires this wish you are doing this is letting you go away from me this is letting you go to the wrong path this is not going letting you go into siratul mustaqim so allah is saying you take lessons from this this is quran so this from quran today we understood la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah some how important it is this is a very beautiful verses of the quran and this has been told to us by only allah this they are the inheritors of knowledge from rasulullah so we pray to allah subhanahu wa taala allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala sayyidina muhammad wa sallam o allah subhanahu wa taala please accept our efforts o allah subhanahu wa taala forgive us whatever was done intentionally and unintentionally o allah subhanahu wa taala make us make you know allah subhanahu wa taala die as on iman allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala sayyidina subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alaykum